Namaste and welcome to yet another round of the Quality Dialogues. The Quality Council of India over the last 25 years has been working quietly through its various arms and wings to ensure citizen-centric governance. One of the critical aspects, ladies and gentlemen, is to ensure that administrative reforms and addressal of public grievances happens at a pace with which a nation is growing. Management gurus say management is consequence by its absence. But what do the quality gurus of our country have to say? Today, we are joined by somebody who along with his team has been quietly working with the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances. The secretary of this department, V. Srinivasji, Namaste. Thank you very much for making the time. I know it's a busy, busy day and there are mountains of work that you have, but this is an important conversation. So let's start at the very beginning. For our viewers, can you tell us what is the Department of Administrative Reforms in Public Grievances? What's its role? And uh, how does QCI, through DARPG, help in effective governance? Thank you very much for inviting me to the Quality Dialogues. And uh, the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances is responsible for implementation of the next generation administrative reforms in the Amritkal period. Mm. So these can be classified as secretariat reforms, swachhta campaigns, benchmarking of governance through development of indices like the Good Governance Index, the National E-Services Delivery Assessment, redressal of public grievances and improving service delivery through the CP grams, digitization of uh, government secretariat from the move from digitization to digitalization to digital transformation, transformation. Wow. of institutions mm. that we witness. So, and also recognizing meritocracy mm. through uh, the Prime Minister's awards for excellence in public administration and the National E-Governance Awards. So this is the broad mandate of the Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances. As the Honorable Prime Minister has said from the ramparts of Red Fort, the objective of next generation administrative reforms is to bring government and citizens closer using digital technologies. Hmm. So that is the mandate that we are executing. So e-governance across 700 plus districts, so many talukas, thousands of railway stations. So I'm just uh, broadly saying, uh, does all of this fall under your uh, ambit? Yes, we. When I say your department, Sam? We are currently taking up uh, the big job of implementation of the special campaign 2.0, hmm. which uh, seeks to institutionalize swachhata and minimize pendency in the central government. So the Swachhata campaign, as the Honorable Prime Minister has directed us, is being implemented in the remotest parts of India. Mm. So you have more than 85,000 uh, Swachhata campaign sites that have been identified by the attached subordinate offices, as also Krishi Vigyan Kendras, mm. police stations being taken up under paramilitary forces. We have 24,000 post offices. Wow. 7,500 railway stations where the campaign is being carried out and this entire gamut of this campaign both on the Swachhita side as also for reducing pendency is being monitored on a digital portal where mm. data is fed in on a daily basis mm. and secretaries to government of India review on a daily basis. Mm. So a number of citizen centric success stories have come up in this uh, campaign mm. as it is uh, unfolding and I have personally been witness to uh, a number of uh, really outstanding practices which mm. have uh, come up. Mm. But uh, how, how, do you, how does your team function? Because this also means monitoring when you are talking governance reforms, uh, it's not just easing the entire process, uh, putting it or digitizing it, but it's also constant monitoring. So what does your team do? Yes, we have a very strong team uh, that is uh, at the back end mm. of this entire campaign and uh, Quality Council of India is our knowledge partner. So there is a very large team of Quality Council of India that is deployed with us that looks into uh, the various aspects of the campaign. For example, the third party evaluation assessment is prepared by them. The uh, construct of the campaign in terms of uh, timely monitoring, formulation of reports as also the Twitter analytics. Mm. These are areas where the Quality Council of India works closely with us. 
we had implemented a similar campaign in 2021 on a slightly smaller scale mm. and the third party assessment reports were taken up mm. in uh, consultation with the quality council of india okay. so based on the success of that campaign this campaign uh, the current one of 2022 is much much larger in scale scope and implementation modalities mm. so this kind of scaling up was possible because of so many ideas that the quality council of india generated from their team of very young smart technocrats who come and work with us mm. but how are you as drpg bringing the citizen and the government closer we bring the citizen and government closer by easing processes mm. and also by facilitating faster decision making and uh, one of the big reforms that has been followed in the central secretariat under the uh, Modi government has been that the initiative for increasing efficiency in the central secretariat. Okay. So uh, the number of levels through which a file passes has been reduced to four. So that enables faster decision making. Otherwise, you have these gargantuan chains of hierarchy through which files pass. Mm. Similarly delegation of financial powers have been monitored. So the DRPG led this campaign of major secretariat reform through implementation of delayering, delegation of financial power, adoption of e-office yeah. and above all implementation of the desk officer system. So each of these initiatives when put together contributed to a massively digitized central secretariat where the physical files have come down significantly and e-files have gone up. So that is the transformation that uh, the Central Secretariat has undergone mm. in the last four years. Now that must have been quite a challenge uh, getting the bureaucracy to accept digitization. How, how big a challenge was that? Because you are somebody who's grown through this process. So you've been part of this uh, department for a long time. So as a quality guru, how easy or difficult was it to get people to embrace technology? And from the Prime Minister's vision point of view, how critical was it that it was being championed right from the very top? The leadership mantle, of course, and the guidelines uh, came from the Honorable Prime Minister himself. And he envisaged a digital hmm. central secretariat. He also envisaged that citizens' grievances should be redressed in the shortest possible time. Hmm. So these are two big platforms, the e-office platform and the CPGrams platform. And uh, these were taken up uh, to implement CP grams on a scale that we currently implement with about 86,000 grievance officers necessitated mapping of last mile grievance officers in each of the departments and ministries. So that took us almost uh, 2019, September 25, we started this initiative mm. and we have just completed it in 2022. Wow. So it took us three years to map it. Similarly, e-office version 7.0, which is now fully adopted in the central secretariat, also took an equally long period of time because it needed upgradation of a secretariat or a ministry and a department from version 5.6 to version 6 to version 7. So it, it took fairly time consuming processes, but over a period of time, we could universalize both applications. Hmm. The, gov the Prime Minister talks about minimum government, maximum governance. So let's come to the Good Governance Index 2021. What are some of the key I outcomes? The hmm. Good Governance Index is a major initiative. In fact, uh, I've been associated with it from the initial stages of conceptualization mm. in 2018. And uh, by the time we, uh, we uh, went through a number of permutations and combinations, what are the sectors that should be there in the Good Governance Index? What are the uh, indicators that should be available? And what should be the data sources for these indicators and the weightages that are assigned to each of these data sources? So. Uh, a sectoral group of secretaries was uh, constituted to look into the number of indicators that would go in. And after prolonged uh, discussions and consultations across ministries and states, mm. we felt at the first stage, the good governance index should be an assessment of governance of states. Mm. And that was what was pursued. A 10 sector, 58 indicator index has been developed, which monitors the performance of states mm. in terms of uh, agriculture, commerce industry, citizen-centric administration, judiciary, health, education and other social sectors. So, and it provides a comprehensive guide as to the areas where governance quality is improving and areas where 
uh, more concerted policy interventions would be necessary. Hmm. And what are the uh, overall indicators? How are our states faring? The states uh, overall, the GGI 2019 vis-a-vis -vis GGI 2021, what we found was that the good governance index of 2021 showed uh, progression that the, all states across India had progressed. Mm. Of course, there were states which progressed in double digits also and uh, there were states which uh, were slightly slower in terms of progress. But the broad trend of India's uh, governance model has been that uh, states were progressing in the right direction. Mm. So, particularly states like Uttar Pradesh where recruitment of uh, police constables was done immediately showed an improvement in terms of justice delivery systems. Mm -hmm. Similarly, uh, again a uh, state like Madhya Pradesh where a lot of recruitment of nursing staff was done showed improvement in health indicators, health indicators. and also in immunization. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the translation of policy implementation into a measurable index represented a very significant step for us mm. and one state saw how useful this uh, benchmarking of governance was many states came forward with requests that it should be taken to the district level district level so we had requests from uttar pradesh arunachal pradesh gujarat and jammu kashmir has yeah. been recently released so uh, a number of states have come forward that please take it to district level recently in the meeting with secretaries of uh, administrative reforms and personnel, uh, the Minister of State for Personnel, Dr. Jitin Singh Ji had directed us to take the good governance index to blocks mm. and tehsils of India. Yeah. So, we are trying to understand and create a district good governance portal which will monitor governance progress at block level also. Yeah. Because, because uh, there are many uh, uh, economists, even former bureaucrats who are talking about block level economies. Uh, you mentioned Uttar Pradesh which is working at ODOP or one district, one produce or one product and so that is why the focus at district level. Jammu Kashmir, you just touched upon it. So, what are the outcomes that have come in because they are the first to commission this kind of uh, uh, study at district good governance. So, what is the uh, net outcome there? Jammu Kashmir, uh, I have had the opportunity to visit a number of times in the last three years. In fact, uh, mm. I think barely a few days after the abrogation of Article 370, uh, the Honorable Minister of State uh, for Personnel, Dr. Jitan Singh Ji, asked me to head a Ministry of Personnel delegation to Jammu and Kashmir. In our interactions with the then Chief Secretary of Jammu Kashmir, one of the big subjects that he threw up was please implement e-office. We are running uh, dual secretariats uh, at Srinagar and Jammu and the mm. Darbar movement entails carrying more than 300 truckloads of files. So, please digitize those files so that mm. we can operationalize both secretariats. So, today after implementation of e-office, both secretariats have been uh, uh, simultaneously operationalized. Mm. The same thing we saw with the district good governance index and we also did a national e-services delivery assessment for them. What we found was that Jammu and Kashmir had digitized and operationalized more than 150 services wow. so, online. So, that was a big transformation for uh, the Union Territory Government. Mm -hmm. We were also associated with uh, reforming their uh, public grievance portal which was initially called Avaze Awam portal mm. and today it is called JKI Grams and today JKI Grams has mapped 20,000 officers wow. on the portal. So, the grievances can be redressed in real time. You have created a portal, how effectively is it being used and how is effectively is the are the grievances being redressed? Does that also come under your domain? Yes, we hmm. monitor uh, public grievances very closely. The Honorable Prime Minister himself reviews public grievances on a monthly basis in Pragati meetings. Hmm. And uh, in addition to that, the DRPG comes up with publications on uh, public grievances on a monthly basis, wherein which uh, we come up with a publication for central ministries and one for states. Hmm. And we try to identify the areas where the citizen is submitting grievances. If there are policy areas, immediately the root cause analysis points out certain policy corrections would be necessary. Mm. For example, in the pandemic period, we were getting a lot of grievances with regard to evacuation of Indian citizens. Yes. And uh, the evacuation requests were more than 
100,000 at a point of time. Then Vande Bharat Mission started hmm. and uh, the policy intervention of commencing Vande Bharat flights immediately ensured that grievance redressal was possible. Possible. L let's talk about Special Campaigns 2.0. What are the objectives of Special Campaigns 2.0 and how did this come about? The Special Campaign 2.0 has very lofty objectives. One is it wants to institutionalize Swachhata. Hmm. And uh, the second is it wants to minimize pendency in government. So every ministry and department has also pursued this objective with uh, great rigor and enthusiasm. And hmm. you'll find thousands of officers participating in hmm. it in, and uh, the leadership role being provided by uh, honorable cabinet ministers and members of the council of ministers. Senior secretaries to government of India have uh, participated in these campaign activities. And you'll find a number of citizen-centric initiatives have been taken up. One of the really interesting ones that I found was that the CISF at Hyderabad airport started a process where in which they monitored time of uh, a passenger from the time he enters the airport to the time he reaches the departure gate. Departure gate. So he ensures that they want to bring it down to five minutes. Wow. So that is an objective. So they, they've uh, improved their queue system in a manner in which it can reach. Second, the Department of Agriculture Research and Extension came up with this proposal of plastic-free, parthenium-free farms. So they've identified several target villages where farmers will be trained to, uh, on Swachhata to ensure plastic-free farms. Then uh, we've had uh, areas like uh, CBIC, CBDT, which mm. are very heavy in carrying records, yeah. legacy records also. And uh, they have come up with a major campaign of digitization, which has freed office spaces in a big way. And uh, for example, uh, CBDT, which has a huge citizen interface in terms of income tax, uh, pays coming and asking questions uh, regularly, uh, has come up with an approach where in which they would like to bring the number of uh, public grievances to target zero. Target. So that is what they have been pursuing. And what we have seen is more than uh, 85,000 cleanliness campaign sites where it is being taken up. The Ministry of Railways has come up with 100% mechanized cleaning in major railway stations. So we don't see any major uh, broom cleaning. You know? mm. So you have mechanized cleaning using 20 types of uh, mm. machines which is being taken up. So every ministry is coming up with new things and Department of Posts, I must mention, has taken up linking Aadhaar with uh, your bank account so mm. that uh, the postman has a role in it. Similarly, I attended a town hall meeting of pensioners in which uh, more than 80 years old pensioners could mm. use the face authentication app in the month of October for uh, submitting their Jeevan Praman certificates. Yeah. So the response not only from uh, government servants but also from citizens to this campaign has been overwhelmingly supportive. Mm. But that also means huge pressures digitally in terms of a digital infrastructure to be able to handle this. One is you will have tons of scrap to deal with because physical files will become redundant the moment they are digitized. The other aspect is to keep it A, digitally secure and B, minimize or make the interface user friendly for the person who is coming on. The other thing is also awareness. So do you play a role in trying to build awareness? Uh, do you have interactions with directly with the citizen uh, as far as grievances, redressal is concerned? Yes, we have had an approach wherein which uh, the successfully disposed uh, grievances are uh, presented before the Honorable Minister of State for Personnel and mm. he's also participated in hackathons and also in Facebook yeah. live discussions where he took questions from citizens. Mm. And uh, the overall experience has been extremely positive. The question that you have flagged mm. as to how is quality monitored in these uh, yeah in disposal of public grievances. One of the ways of monitoring quality has been that we have operationalized a call center. A okay. PSNL call center has been operationalized. So where every grievance that is redressed, the citizen is called to find out are you satisfied with the grievance redressal. If you are not satisfied with it, automatically it is elevated to an appellate authority. Hmm. So the appellate next level authority looks at the citizen's grievance and tries to ensure his grievance is adequately redressed. Hmm. 
and uh, that particular operationalization of a call center with reach outreach to every citizen has been an extremely satisfying experience from the citizen point of view mm -hmm. Let me ask you, Srinivasji, India's quality movement, how would you uh, see, where do you see it going and what role will India as a nation have to play in good governance models globally? What we see when you look at the global governance models is mm. every country is going digital, be it from uh, United States to Australia, be it from Estonia to Singapore, mm. everybody is going digital. And India's uh, digital transformation of institutions as symbolized by a digital central secretariat, public mm. grievance re uh, redressal platforms, as also several other Aadhaar based uh, direct benefit transfers represents the right step. And we can be sure that in any 21st century governance model, India will be at the forefront in terms of providing simplified processes to its citizens. Mm. The Prime Minister, when he says that made in India should mean something, it, it should mean quality, it should stand for that you can trust it implicitly and that comes from uh, dependability or trust and perhaps the underlying aspect, that's why he underlines saying quality at every uh, level. Now QCI has launched a marquee campaign called Gunvatta Se Atma Nirbharta. So what is the role that DARPG is going to play in this campaign? We've had a long association with QCI that dates back to 1990. In fact, uh, we invited the chairman QCI and celebrated the Silver Jubilee with them because we've been associated with them for almost their entire journey. Mm. And QCI's team of young professionals have worked uh, tirelessly to make these special campaigns, to make these innovative practices possible over several decades. Thank you. Thank you so much.